gerade. Ja. Right, uh, congrats, man. Uh, bantamweight winner now. How does that feel? Good. And I just learned that I'm the first one who that ever stopped Victor Henry. So I think that's a very good, uh, very good way to start my 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 cruise at bantamweight. Yeah, we know your style. You always like to finish the fights, anyways. But did you actually not even know that he hadn't been finished prior to this? No, I didn't even know. It's uh, A. A. Ron who told me that uh, we were talking. He's like, "You're the first guy to finish Henry." I'm like, "Man, he's 37. Got so many fights." So yeah. That's off to me. Yeah. Um, so, I guess, can you just walk us through this fight week? Like, how did it all feel um, coming in at bantamweight, doing the cut, all that <coughs> stuff? Yeah. So, uh, I, w I went to the PI after my last fight, and uh, we looked at my frame, we looked at everything, and we realized I was one of the smallest featherweight, if not the smallest right now. So, I embarked into a, a proper diet and a proper uh, fix uh, to, to fix this issue. And, and sorry, uh, 35 actually felt better than uh, butching 45, like eating pizza. I could eat pizza and do 45. Like uh, when I was doing 55, I was eating burgers to make weight. And uh, so now I feel like a true professional. It took me, uh, it's my 15th fights in the UFC. I'm quite experienced in the UFC, but now I feel, I didn't, uh, like I was saying to my, my entourage, I didn't feel good this week. I fell at my place and that was a good feeling. <laughs> That's great. Um, I guess like what about the, the rehydration part? I think people are maybe worried about the durability, especially after the last fight. Um, yeah. Did all that feel good? Did the punches feel hard or anything I, like that? Well, I can't believe people are like, oh, durability. I had some very big shots in my career and I always got up and I fucking think Jean Silva could knock out a horse. I think this guy is spe like, yeah, special power. I, I remember being in the clinch with him and I was like, okay, this guy, this guy was big. Then he's the, the guy that punched sense into me into <laughs> going to 135. So, but he's very nice. I met him at the DPI. We have, he's a very cool guy, but fuck, he was big. I think it was like 185 when I saw him. I was like, I never weighed 160 in my life. So 35, that's my house now. Yeah, could you notice like in there, you mentioned you were one of the smallest featherweights. Yeah. You're probably gonna be a bigger bantamweight now. So did you feel <laughs> like you know, strength difference that you didn't feel at featherweight fights? Yeah, but it's like a tool. If you don't use it properly, it can play against you. I overloaded on some shots because I'm, I'm less, uh, used to people having this much uh, evasiveness. So he got into some shots and got into the body lock and swept me once. I swept him a couple times too. But yeah, so I need to be sure that not because I'm bigger than these guys who have a bigger frame that I'd unuse it uh, or I use it improperly. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna learn a lot from this uh, fight. For sure, uh, bantamweight might be the best division in the entire sport. Um, yeah. When you look at yourself in this weight class, I guess, how do you feel your path takes you after making a successful debut? <coughs> uh, I won't, uh, I won't drop names. I'm interested in uh, anybody, but for now I'm having a little boy and I'm going to take care of him uh, in, uh, in January. And after that, I'll be back uh, in the octagon around May, whatever UFC I have in store for me. I'm not going to chase names. There's a lot of very good fighters. There's some very good veterans as well. Like I grown up watching Jose Aldo and I see him fight, so that would, that would be fun. But I'm in no position to call the, the king of Rio right now. Congrats on the uh, win Thank and you. the baby boy. Thank you. Um, first of all, just it, this is kind of obvious, but I imagine now that you're at bantamweight, that is going to impact taking short notice fights. Oh, absolutely. You, the, 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 I'm not. I'm not doing this even at featherweight. I stopped doing it for for a while because it's it, the UFC needs tons of preparation, and it needs to 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 pay, not pay just in in money, but pay in the the. Like, I remember back then, I jumped in two weeks' notice for Taporia. No, one week notice to Taporia, and he didn't make weight. So to that, that, that's big. But I won't jump in in December or something. I'm, I'm out. There's how you feel in the cage. There's also how you feel just in day-to-day -day life. So how do you feel now? Like, I imagine you've changed your diet. You've changed your lifestyle a fair bit. It's, it's good. It's necessary. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a big feeling guy. I, I just know what's best for me. And now I'm, I feel like I'm fighting for something more than myself to, 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 to make sure that the, the, the boy and the wife have, have opportunities that I unfortunately didn't grow up with. So I'm like not fighting for yourself means less feelings and more duty. Very admirable. And then I, we didn't quite hear it back here, but I think you got a little political in the uh, case. <laughs> so was that, I, I'm not going to get into the politics of it, but was that something you had planned or was that just... It was fun? just something funny. I thought about it when I was walking because I, I was fighting and in between rounds I hear the F Trudeau and I'm like, okay, if Pierre Polyev gets in, I'll, I'll bring the belt to him. And uh, that, that's my deal with Canada or else I'll move. <laughs> so you wouldn't bring it to Trudeau? 
I, I don't think he's going to make a second term, uh, no, third term. I don't know which way he is, but uh, I would, because I'm because I'm a nice guy now. I'm almost I almost lost my Instagram because I say too much stupid stuff, and uh, so now I'm uh, politically correct. I love everybody, and uh, yeah. I'm a better man. Speaking of uh, stupid stuff online, you uh, you showed off your tattoo, and then you picked out the one guy who found uh, an issue with it. And uh, that's very funny. You do have a, a semen, a semen on your back. Yeah. Pirate. Yeah, exactly. That made me laugh, man. Like uh, when I used my social media back then, we used to be promoting fights and be all, like all that serious. But I, I truly believe that like, we're. Not I believe, but it's what's certain is we're all going to die one day and I'm having fun with social media now. It's not something that weighs on me. It's something I used to release tension and have fun. And I like s people send each other stupid memes and uh, pe people from the MME community are, are mad, like especially on Twitter. You guys are crazy. It's always like... Uh, a weird name like Bones, uh, Bones, Volt kind of. They, it's always weird names and they always say stupid shit and they make me laugh. You, you can only laugh about it. So with, with that in mind, what was your reaction to Derek Lewis uh, responding to Putin? Did what he said? That? No? Oh, he, he apparently is not a fan. Of Putin? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's gravy and, and fries, so it's not. People are trying to make it as his... I feel it's something exotic. Me, I like it. It's good. It's a Quebec dish, and uh, it's a, like we have all ways of making it. But you cannot like it. It's okay. He he related it to something else. It started with a P, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> He's a crazy man. Unfortunately, he didn't fight uh, tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats, Charles. Uh, obviously, in preparation for this fight, you know you're balancing your weight, skill acquisition. How do you balance those two things with the move down to 135? Uh, I realized I was sleeping a lot more and uh, because my, I was per, uh, performing very good in training, but then I would have crashes. Like, uh, so I need to, the, the, it's a change of diet means a change of ener energy and now your body is using fat as energy instead of sugar. So you need to cut on this, cut on that. So yeah, the UFC PIR, I, I cannot say how much I, I owe a lot to them for this preparation in terms of strength, in terms of uh, mental preparation. You, maybe you guys don't know, but there's a sports psychologist named Mika, and I talked to him, and I'm like, I used to think like, oh, psychology, what do they know, you know? Like, uh, most of them are vegan badminton player. What, how are they gonna help me be a UFC fighter? So, <laughs> and but talking to this guy, I was like, okay, maybe I went a little bit hard. Uh, they, they, they know their stuff, so the UFC PI, uh, made this victory possible. I owe a lot to them. And is that something you talk about your diet with them, or is it other things like you know trying to you know get build your performance with your mentality, everything and stuff like that? Everything they take care of everything: your body, your mind, uh, what you eat. Uh, when you go to the PI, uh, you have access to everything. So they they're quite incredible. And even when I was out back to Canada, back to Quebec, they reached out every week. I was training. How do you feel fatigue? Okay, we should increase this. Okay, we should decrease that. So uh, it's a tool I never used, and I just did, and 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 it showed in this good performance. Obviously, you picked up wins at lightweight, at featherweight, and now <laughs> moving down to 135. Are you asking yourself right now what took you so long to make this decision? Uh, immaturity, stupidity. I, like I, I don't like when people are telling me to do stuff. I want to have my own experience. Like if even if even if you tell me fire burns, I'll put my hand in it, and I'm like, oh shit, you're right. So I did a lot of stupid stuff, but now, like I said in the beginning of this interview, I don't feel good. I feel at the right place, and that's a fantastic feeling. Victor Henry is a, a tough opponent to come down to at 135. It yes. must feel good to get the win and get the finish uh -huh. over that guy. Like you said, first guy to finish him too. Oh, that's that's amazing. It, 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 when when they gave me they gave me two names, and I was like, oh shit, they're very good guys. They, they, I won't mention the second one because I'll fight them eventually. But uh, they they sent me two names, and I was like, okay, I'll I'll, I'll go with Henry. I'll, uh, so I pick Henry. But Henry, you know, is on a streak. He, I think the only loss he has was uh, Asun Sao, which is. Very good fighter, Rafael Asuncao. Very, very good 35er. And uh, he fight those young wrestlers, and, and he always beat those guys. And he has a, he's a cardio machine, evasiveness. So I was like, okay, that's going to be a tough puzzle, but we managed it. Did the fight play out exactly as you kind of envisioned? Oh, no. No. Frick, no. I, I thought I would be able to snipe him and my, uh, to be able to use my range, but... I sparred with guys who were bigger than him. I have two, two young kids uh, at the gym. They're 20 years old. They're bantamweights as well, and they 
they're going to be the next big thing, the, the Orsini brothers, but they're, they're much bigger. And I was like, oh, I'll train with bigger guys. So smaller guys, I'm not impressed uh, by, by their performance, like George would say. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I don't think it was a good idea because I, I he was <clears throat> ducking. And every time I was trying to attack, it was ducking and moving. And I, I was not used to that. So now I'll, I'll make sure I have proper 35ers, professional fighters who train with me for the next camp. Congrats on the win and Thank congrats on becoming a dad. Thank you very much. It's good. Oh, here we go. Um, mine are more superficial questions, but how was your, how were your expectations for fans? Were, do you think you were able to provide quite a show for them tonight? Sorry, you need to speak a little oh, bit. Sorry. Later. It's okay. Um, how do you think you provided to fans your show, your fight? How do you think that went tonight? What I provided to the fans? Yeah, during your fight for your for the fans, yeah. Oh, I think they liked it. Uh, I threw my mouthpiece. I was so happy. Uh, the Canadian fans, like, when they say, Richard, you're going to be fighting in Edmonton, I'm like, oh, my God, so exotic. So, wow. And I'm like, okay. And then we arrive here, and then Dana White came in uh, yesterday, and he's like, that was the fastest selling uh, uh, event and then uh, normally when you start the card like when I fight in Vegas and I'm in the prelims there's nobody and then I was in the prelims today and there was plenty of people energy the crowd a guy tried to give me a beer I don't drink beer sorry so fans Canadian fans are something else and uh, I hope they, they, they come back to Montreal one day and uh, I know that George uh, was a big thing but uh, there's a couple of very good guys me and Marc Andre and, and Ayman I think we could carry a proper card uh, but we'll see we'll see what UFC says Thank you. Thank you. It's good. Thank you, guys. Oh. Where's your...